Hey everyone, how are you this evening? My name is Dorothy Inez. For those of you who have, let me see, am I actually live? I still, okay, hey, I am here. Hi everyone and welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Dorothy Inez. That is Dorothy Inez said together, not Dorothy. Let me go ahead and just make sure I am live in the group. Beautiful, I am here. Awesome. So welcome, those of you who don't know me, my first name is Dorothy Inez, last name Del Tufo, and I am a confidence coach for women entrepreneurs. And I specialize in the area of beauty and self-care. And so today on Ritual Day, I kind of didn't know where exactly I fit in, and I thought, well, I talked to Jessica, and I was like, well, maybe it is uh, rituals is where I fit in because I believe beauty and the act of self-care take place when we engage ourselves with rituals. And so today I'm going to talk about sacred beauty and self-care and why it matters, especially for us women who are spiritual entrepreneurs. Because oftentimes as spiritual entrepreneurs, guess what? We're always giving out, giving out, giving out, and rarely are we receiving, rarely are we taking in. And the result of that is what? We're burnt out, we find ourselves tired, we find ourselves feeling a lot of dis-ease, um, disease in the body, and so today, I want to share with you why self-care and, and beauty practices are so important to our sense of well-being, our sense of confidence. We have special guests back here in the back. <laughs> our sense of uh, confidence. And so let's first look at, and I've got some notes here, so if you see me looking down, I like to keep myself a little bit somewhat on track and Sometimes I don't stay on track because spirit likes to come in and take over. Some of you girls know how that is. And, um, but let's first look at, the, let's kind of break these words down. What does sacred mean? And when I looked up sacred, sacred means it's like connected to God, having that connection with God. And then I like to break, whenever I do words, I like to um, break it down even more. So let's take that word sacred down even a little bit more. What does sacred mean? What are some synonyms for sacred? We look at blessed, we look at holy, we look at divine, we look at spiritual. That's what we're talking about when we look at sacred self-care. It's holy, it's blessed, it's divine, it's spiritual. And then we look at the word beauty. You see, and beauty can often be a trigger, particularly for spiritual women, because spiritual women will tend to think, oh, beauty is something superficial. Beauty is all about putting a mask on, especially when it comes to the part that I love, which is makeup. You see, I see makeup as a way for me to take a woman from black and white, from shades and highlights, to helping her see herself in color. But beauty is actually spirit. Beauty is who we are. We are created in the image and likeness of pure beauty. So the definition of beauty is a combination of qualities such as shape, color, form, that, that have a pleasing aesthetic to the senses, particularly sight. You see, we first judge, you know, and as an image consultant, um, I, I, when it comes to beauty, I do all things beauty, skin, makeup, image. And where we learn in image consulting that how we show up on the outside is how people first judge us. They don't care about the inside. The inside is second. So beauty to man, to humanity, 
first begins by what they see, but we as spiritual beings know that true beauty comes from what's on the inside. So when I looked at the synonyms for beauty, some beautiful words came up. Grace, charm, artistry, artistry, how beautiful. Allure, allure, refinement, style. So we look at, we're looking at blessed grace, holy charm, divine artistry, uh, spiritual refinement. This is what sacred beauty is all about. So when we look at how do I define sacred beauty, I define sacred beauty as a beauty that comes from the divine, a beauty that comes from the inside out. It is who you be and who we see. That is true beauty. That is a beauty inside and out. It is the total package. And so like I said, I know a lot of us as spiritual women, we can equate beauty with being superficial. We can equate it with being fake, self-indulging. But as I said, the truth is we are beauty. Ancient text tells us that we are God's masterpiece, spirit's masterpiece. Let's look at what that word means. That word masterpiece means you, sister, are one of a kind. You are a one of a kind wonder. There is no one like you, no one. You are unique. You are spirit. You are the divines. You are God's most valued creation. You are God's greatest work. And why do I tell you all of that? This isn't about coming here and preaching anything to you, but it's, it's to help you first and foremost know who you are. That you, sister, are created in the image and likeness of the divine. The image and likeness of the creator of all things. Because when we begin to tap into our true spiritual identity, what begins to happen is we begin to awaken to our greatness. We begin to awaken to who we are, our confidence. So when things from the outside world come at us and tell us what we can't do, what we're not um, uh, supposed to do or able to do, we tap into that truth that all things are possible for us because of who we be, who we are in the world. Because that is where true beauty comes from. That is where authentic confidence comes from, ladies. And so because, going back to the first words, because who you are is blessed, sacred, holy, divine, it must be taken care of. You can't continue in this life to keep putting other things before you. You can't continue, sister, to hide out. You have to make yourself a priority, especially as a businesswoman, as an entrepreneur. Because, see, we are called to give of ourselves to others. And it's in that giving of ourselves that we must fill our, our tank through the sacred art of beauty, through the sacred art of self-care. Because inside of us dwells the Creator dwells all power, dwells all beauty, dwells all peace, dwells all holiness. In fact, sister, the very ground you stand on, you sit on, is holy ground because of who you are. You are the temple of God, and the temple of, of God deserves it begs to be adorned with beauty. It begs to be worshipped 
with self-care. So when we look at what is self-care, I think it's important that you create first and foremost an environment that facilitates self-care, that, that invokes beauty, that calls in beauty into your space. No matter where that is, no matter how big, no matter how small, but that sacred space first begins within you, your heart, your mind, your peace, your words. What are you speaking over yourself? What are you speaking over others? What are you surrounding yourself with? Who are you surrounding yourself with? Right? And so a part of sacred self-care, you know, how I like to create that environment is I love setting up, setting the tone through incense, candles, lighting, like every night I have a red light bulb going on in my room. Red is supposed to help, you know, melatonin, but for me it also creates that sense of sacredness. You can tap into the sacred, create that environment simply through the power of the breath. Breathing, knowing that each and every breath is connecting you to the divine. It is a communion. Each time spirit exhales, you're inhaling, and it is this circle of life that creates this communion. And so some of the things that you can do to begin to create a beauty and self-care ritual, some of, there, there's so many things we can do, but I invite you to Think of some, I'm gonna share like this list of things that I have that I do or have done. And then I invite you at the end of this to contemplate how can I create a self-care ritual, a, a beauty ritual for myself that taps me into my feminine, that taps me into my holiness, to my sacredness, to my divinity. I do this? How can I make space for this in my life? Because see, so often we say, I don't have time. I'm guilty of it too. I don't have time. I have so much to do. But you see, it's in the giving of your time to the sacred that you find more time. Because it's in the giving of the time that you begin to have more clarity more peace, more sovereignty. So some things you can do is have a self-care um, me meditation practice and prayer practice. And let me distinguish those two for you because some people don't know the distinction. They think those are the same. Prayer is when we beseech. Prayer is when we're talking. But meditation and the way that I've learned from my mentor, Michael Bernard Beckwith, is meditation is a time for listening. It's a time to tap in to the heavenly realm, that radio station that's up in heaven. And it's a time for us to tap in and hear with the ears behind the ears, as Reverend Michael would say. To hear from heaven. What am I here to do? What are my next steps? And then have your journal handy and write. Write without judging, sisters. Just learn to listen to that still, small voice within. Sacred water rituals, as I call them. Taking baths, taking showers. I find that when I'm in water, that's when I get my, my greatest downloads. Putting some essential oils in there, putting fresh flowers in there. Music, salts to clean.
cleanse and detox the temple. Taking time out in nature, practice grounding, taking your shoes off and just letting your feet dig in like you did when you were a little child. Do you remember that? These are the times, that these are the things that connect us back to source, that connect us back to our true beauty. When you put your makeup on in the morning, Rather than go, oh, let me hurry up and let me get my face done. How about that become a ritual? And that as you do each part of your face, that you begin to send it the energy of gratitude, taking care of your skin. Did you know your skin is the first line of defense for your body? Did you know that? It deserves to be taken care of. It deserves to be exfoliated. It deserves to be massaged and moisturized. It deserves to be told, thank you. Thank you so much. Putting your makeup on your eyes, especially in the day and age of a mask. The eyes are the windows to the soul, ladies. Let them shine. Show them love. Thank them for all the hours that they spend in front of this TV, this, this computer, the iPhone. Thank them by giving them the gift of beauty, the gift of color, your lips, your cheeks, this amazing bone structure that God has given you. Adorn it with beauty, with color. You see, that begins to now hopefully give you a different way of looking at beauty. It's not about putting a mask on. It's about adorning the temple for the Holy One within. You see, I used to say, you know, God don't do shabby. God does chic. You know, you are the temple of the Most High. You are the temple of the creator of every living thing. And it deserves 5, 10, 15, 20, an hour if that's what it takes for you to feel your most beautiful, confident, powerful self. Your style. What are you wearing? How are you adorning the temple? Is the style that you're wearing, is it refreshing? Collective of the woman on the inside? Do the colors speak the language of who you are? Do they vibrate you out into the universe? If they don't, sister, I invite you to revisit. Revisit your style right now while we're in this season of life. This is a time, this COVID time is an invitation for us to go within and rediscover and reawaken who we are and who we were meant to be. Because sometimes we can forget. I know I myself am going through a reawakening, a repositioning of why I'm here, a, 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 an expansion of my voice, which is why I chose to come in this group. I'm gonna be honest with you ladies, you know what? I'm a Jesus follower. And I was a little nervous about coming in here into a group of women who are into things that I may or may not be into. But I'm not your traditional Jesus follower. But I thought, you know, your mind gets to talking and it starts telling you, you know what? You don't belong there. They don't want to hear what you have to say. See, those kinds of voices will keep your light dim when it was meant to shine. Because see, those who were meant for you, they will resonate with your voice. They will resonate with your beauty. They will resonate with who you are. But you must first begin to discover who you are. And when you discover who you are, take care of her. Love her. 
beautify her, adorn her, because she deserves that, sister. She deserves that. Eating, sacred eating as I call it, something I constantly have to work on because I know the God in me deserves beautiful foods. I love, if you follow me, you see like I love making beautiful smoothie bowls and I feel so amazing when I eat them because I deserve them. Everything I get, that it should be beautiful. Everything you get should be beautiful that enters into your body. If it's not beautiful, it shouldn't enter our bodies. So we need to practice the sacred art of eating, the sacred art of body movement. I hate exercise, I'm not gonna lie, but I love to move my body. I love to dance and just feel the energy of the music. Singing, singing helps calm the nervous system. This is another sacred beauty practice, self-care practice. Singing, the voice, the vibration of the vocal cords calm our nervous system. They bring us joy and peace. Sleep, we have to sleep. We literally need our beauty sleep, sisters. Because 80% of how old you look or how young you look is based on your lifestyle. It's based on your lifestyle. It's not based on age. A lot of people wouldn't believe how old I am. I'm in my mid-50s. But I look amazing because I care for myself. Could I use it to lose a few pounds? Heck yeah. <laughs> but I take care of my skin. I wear colors that make me feel good. I sing. I do what lights my soul up. That is a part of sacred self-care and beauty. Fragrances. Do you have fragrances? That, you, that, that make you just feel amazing, essential oils, perfumes. Wear those, wear things that uplift you and just make you feel beautiful. I'm gonna tell you, I invest, there's this one perfume and it is way more than I would ever, ever, ever spend. But I spend it and I use it sparingly because it makes me feel beautiful floral. I love it. So you're asking, Dorothy Inez, okay, we know all this. We know all this. How does this help me in my business? Well, I'm going to tell you before my time is up. It's going to bring you more peace. It's going to bring you more life balance. It's going to give you a greater sense of purpose. You're going to be able to pour into others like never before. You're actually going to have more time. You're going to feel more creative. You're going to feel more connected to who you are. Your relationships are going to be so much better because who you be is love. Who you be is beauty. And guess what? That's attractive. That's sexy. That attracts in your tribe that you are called to serve. It gives you a positive mindset. And it gives you energy. Energy and energy. When you begin to love yourself first, Scripture says, love your neighbor as yourself. Yourself. Some people get it twisted. And they think that means give, 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 give to everybody else. It's not selfish to love yourself because it's from the abundance of beauty, the abundance of love that you have, sister, that you're able to give forth to others. 
I hope my talk today has blessed you. I'd love to see in the comments what your number one takeaway was. I have given you in the comments in my little description, there's a little freebie for you. It's called um, Confidence 101. I did my thesis work. I have a master's in organizational psychology, and my thesis work was in the area of confidence in women entrepreneurs. And so I'm actually a scientist in this area. And so I've shared with you a freebie called Confidence 101, and it's there in the, the comments and go ahead and download that. And I just love to hear from you. I'd love to hear how this blessed you. So have a beautiful day, sisters. And thank you to all of you that have shared these last two weeks. I can't wait to continue to see what all of you are doing. Peace and blessings.